Well, hello and welcome to the Intentional Life Podcast. My name is Courtney Asher. I'm Ben Cornick. And we're here with Christ the Rock Community Church in Menasha, Wisconsin, heart of the Midwest, uh, here to bring you some more content on discipleship. We are a disciple-making yeah. church. That's our mission, is to make disciples of Jesus. Yeah. And we do that by living the intentional life, which is our discipleship pathway here at the church. And so we call ourselves the Intentional Life Podcast, so hopefully we can learn more about what it means to grow as followers and disciples of Christ and to make mm-hmm more disciples and followers of Christ. Um, Today we are in our series, Breaking Apart the Four G's of the Intentional Life. So we talked about God time being the root and foundation of how we grow, making Mm -hmm. sure that we spend time with God first. We talked about gather time, which is our corporate gathering. We encourage everyone who's a part of Christ the Rock to come weekly and to gather for fellowship teaching of the word, worship, and for unity and encouragement that we might get momentum in this area of the world Mm -hmm. to really see uh, Christ's mission fulfilled. And today we're going to talk about discipleship group. So group is the third G in the intentional life, and it's also our number one strategy for making disciples. Uh, We believe that this is how Jesus made disciples, is in relationship, in context, in a small group environment, where he was a leader um, that really invested in those he had around him. And that mission then was carried on to us. You know, today yeah. we're here because people faithfully followed that mission of making disciples. Absolutely. So we want to dive into that a little bit and continue to encourage um, all of you in making disciples of Jesus. Yeah. But before you jump into that, Courtney, I, I just want to say, apparently I somehow missed the memo uh, that in this episode, <laughs> we are going to be like really nice and dressy and like wear like yeah. a blazer. Yes. Thank you. Um, I this showed up, I showed up in the t-shirt. <laughs> and, uh, but so if you're listening, uh, you know, just to pretend that I, you know, I'm dressed to the nines. Yeah. We uh, look equally good. Though. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But um, if you're but, watching, yeah, way to step it up. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I totally. Uh, I, I came ready for. Uh, you know, I, I went a different route. Uh, we didn't she, she dressed up, and I went a different route. So, <laughs> well yeah. played. You got your flip flops on too. Or? I do. Okay. I am wearing flip flops right now. Happy so thanks summer for pointing to us. that out as well. Yeah. So. All right. Good. Good. Well, hey, um, the group time, we've talked about the facets of group time in a couple different episodes, but we're going to do like a high level overview real quick to remind ourselves uh, what an intentional discipleship group would look like. Yep. And then from there, we're going to spend some time kind of comparing and contrasting what is so essential about the way this group is set up and what other group type uh, experiences have you maybe had that are similar but different. Yeah. Um, and so for us, discipleship groups, first of all, have a biblical foundation and The Bible is the word of God. It is the authority for all of us in this church. Mm -hmm. Um, And we want it to be the authority that speaks to us in discipleship group. We want to make sure that the foundation of what we're studying and learning is the word of God. It's actually Mm -hmm. our curriculum. Yeah. Uh, We talked about this a little bit in the Bible storying episode. If you want to go back to that and kind of look at how we run a group using the Bible in a reproducible fashion, Mm -hmm. uh, that might be helpful for you. But again, it's a biblical foundation, making sure that uh, what we're saying and teaching and learning and growing around is what Christ said. Mm-hmm. Anything you want to add to that, Ben, about the importance of the biblical foundation? Well, yeah. I mean, um, I think sometimes it it almost sounds like a given. Like, well, yeah, of course we're going to have a biblical foundation. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, there's a lot of times where there are churches that drift away from having the Bible be an authority in mm-hmm. what we're doing. And some churches will even start to elevate uh, tradition above uh, the, the Word of God. Sure. And uh, I just feel like throughout history, uh, when that happens, uh, it's easier for a group of people to kind of get off course. Yeah. And so, um, so when we're making disciples, uh, you know, and we'll talk about the idea that like this is a reproducible mm-hmm. thing. Like, so you have these disciples that are going out making more disciples, making more disciples. If biblical foundation isn't a part of that, then before you know it, you have this whole generation of believers who are like, well, you know, I know a few verses. I don't really need to know like the Word of God. Mm-hmm. And um, and honestly, I, you know, I, I think I've I've encountered some of that just in my short time here in this yeah. world. Is like there's yeah. a lot of believers who haven't been. Um, uh, taught what the Bible actually says. And um, and part of it isn't just like, well, oh, we just want you to know truth because uh, we're just like trying to be these bulldogs about mm-hmm. truth. It's mm-hmm. like, no, like we care about people and we yeah. want them to live lives of flourishing and abundance and like really like healthy, good lives that honor God. And when you don't know the word of God, it's so much easier yeah. to fall into the lies that the enemy has for people. So right. so to me, it's like, it's that bigger piece of like, we actually want people to grab a hold of the word of God because it 
matters for the way we live life. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to disciple making movements, it's like you can kind of be dead in the water if uh, people sure. don't really understand what the Bible has to say. For sure. And it, it's the only, you know, piece of literature that I've read that transcends generation. It transcends, mm-hmm. you know, demographic. It transcends culture, culture, gender. I mean, yeah. Um, and even like spiritual stage. And so mm-hmm. we talk a lot about as leaders assessing totally. where people are at spiritually. Um, I'll tell you what, you get in a passage of scripture and read it in a group of diverse believers, totally new believers, or maybe yet people who aren't Christ followers but are open to it, mm-hmm. all the way to spiritually mature believers. And the Spirit of God is going to use the Word of God to convict individual hearts in meaningful ways mm-hmm. that move them all forward. Yeah. You know, so it's just, it's so much better than even going, uh, you know, pulling a topical study together or trying to find a, you know, book that we think everyone's going to get equal amount of value out of. Mm -hmm. It's really just using like the inspired word of God and Mm -hmm. and the inspiration itself and the Holy Spirit really perpetuates that to be effective. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's the biblical foundation, and it's it's one of the four tenets of discipleship groups that's so important. Mm -hmm. Uh, The second one is an intentional leader. And again, we have an episode on this if you want to go back and really dive into what do we mean by intentional leader, what do we expect of them, how do we train them, all of that is kind of covered. But again, our model is Jesus. Um, We saw him be intentional with the disciples. There were those moments where he was teaching to the multitudes, and then he'd kind of pull the 12 aside and go, did you you catch that? (laughs) Right? Did you you get what I mean? Do you understand? Um, And so in that same way, we want to be intentional about being in relationship with one another where we can teach and train and equip Mm -hmm. um, and help people grow spiritually. Mm -hmm. So we do train our leaders and we um, ask them to have co-leaders and they lead our groups together then in hopefully raising others up to maturity where they can go on to lead others someday. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, The next piece is the relational environment. We talk a lot about relationship um, and how valuable that is to us. And we mean things like authenticity and accountability when we say relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, We we mean being in one another's lives that you can be the church for one another. You can meet each other's needs. Um, You can practically care for one another and and, uh, be uniquely available to one another in a way that the corporate church, the big gathering church can't Mm -hmm. do because we just don't all know one another that well or that intimately. Um, And so we really encourage a relational environment where you're going to be authentic and, and that's the way you can grow. Um, and then lastly, we teach a reproducible process. We teach um, share, connect, minister, disciple. We have different episodes on those too, so go back and check those out. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's a way, it's kind of just a tool to have uh, intentional leaders assess where somebody's at spiritually and then look at what might they need. Mm-hmm. If they're young in their faith and they're you know an infant in the faith, they need spiritual milk. What can I do to help them get the basic tenets of being a Christ follower, yeah. teaching them about abiding and, and reading the word? If they're a young adult in the faith and they're pretty serious about serving and stepping into um, ministry roles, mm-hmm. how can I cast the vision for them to the next step to help them become parents in the faith where mm-hmm. they actually start teaching and leading others? Yep. And so that's the reproducible process for us. It's that share, connect, minister, disciple tool that we train our leaders in. Um, and, and really, again, that's all from a biblical foundation. It's yeah. pulled out of some of that language that we hear Paul talk about yeah. in the church in assessing where people are at spiritually. Um, and we want to be intentional about having that so we know what we're shooting for. Yep. It's not to be rigid. It's not to put people in categories. You know, we don't have a database in the back that says spiritual child, spiritual parent. <laughs> um, but we we want to give know... everybody like a special name tag. That's right. Like, all right. All, you've got the spiritual child name tag. Yes. And, yeah. Yes. But it is yeah. helpful to know what we're shooting for. I mean, yep. for so many years in the church, discipleship has been this ambiguous thing. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, just do it. Just, you know, somehow plant a seed or somehow water it or somehow, you know, Give, contribute your spiritual gift, and people are going to become disciples. Yeah, and it's far from what we see Christ do. He's mm-hmm. intentional about handing off the mission to the point where he goes, "Here it is," and literally says it. Here's the mission, mm-hmm. and now goodbye. I'm going to leave. Yeah, um, well, it's it's a good point because uh, you know. So what you just said is that uh, when we say a discipleship group, when we talk about group time, this is going to be a time where you're going to establish biblical foundation. Mm-hmm. You're going to have an intentional leader a relational environment, a reproducible process. And so we say that, um, and then I could just go, okay, Courtney, like, well, that's like this church's way of doing it, but Mm -hmm. another church might do it a different way. But Mm -hmm. what we've been seeing uh, as we look at disciple-making movements around the world Mm -hmm. is that these four elements are a part of every group model that we've looked at. Right. And so, um, so maybe let's take some time to say, okay, so why is this different then? 
than a group that I did maybe at a different church, you know? So yeah. maybe I was in like a Bible study group, yep. or maybe I was in like a life group mm-hmm. or a connection group mm-hmm. or a community group. Like, the, like, let's talk about how these are different yeah. or how a discipleship group is different than some of those other expressions of a kind of small group type thing that maybe right. people have experienced. Right. Yeah, that's great. So let's name a couple of them. We, you said Bible study. Mm-hmm. So, um, man, that's been around... As long as I can remember, yep. I don't really know how that kind of term got started, but maybe it was mm-hmm. just, we want to learn more about the word. So we're going to get together and talk about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so Bible study is usually not always, but usually focused on just learning. Mm-hmm. And so, um, again, nothing wrong with that. What's good about it is it has a yeah. biblical foundation. Yeah, we're not trying to tell people like, <laughs> man, you went to a group where you learned about the Bible. It's don't not, do not that. Okay. That's not, not it. Okay. Yeah. Right. No, that's not right. what we're saying. Um, but discipleship groups have a slightly different DNA in that, yes, it uses the Word of God. We are mm-hmm. learning the Word of God, and we want you to know the Bible mm-hmm. for sure. But it maybe is less important how many rivers connect to the Sea of Galilee mm-hmm. or what road they were on in Damascus, mm-hmm. right? Or um, what area geographically this came from or what language or, you know. Well, and even that, like I, I've heard of people who uh, they're in a Bible study. And so, like, they're like, look, I know the book of Ephesians. Like, you know, I was in an Ephesian study. Sure. And, like, we, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, but, like, you know, but then I'll see them do things uh, where, like, they will be, like, not humble. Yeah. Um, where they won't do things that are loving. Where they, and, and I'm like, well, Ephesians talks to us about being humble. Ephesians yep. talks to us about right. being loving. So, so to me, like, one of the, the things about a Bible study is that, It's about the information. It's about like, here, I know these scriptures. I've memorized some of them. I understand the context. But then sometimes it's like the application piece is what Mm -hmm. can be missing. Like, where's the accountability in the application? Exactly. Because their goal was to just learn it. And so like, if like everyone in the group seems like they learned what was taught, then Mm -hmm. they're kind of like, okay, I think Mm -hmm. we accomplished it. Exactly. And I mean, if you think about the Pharisees, right, Mm -hmm. that was what they knew. They didn't, they knew a lot. They memorized the Torah. They had the law and the scripture Mm -hmm. understood to the point where they're like, hey, Jesus is breaking the law. What are we going to do about that? Right? Mm -hmm. Um, Or at least their interpretation interpretation of of, the law. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But so, so they knew a lot. They had a lot of knowledge, but it's, but there's this heart change that Christ asks of us, this Mm -hmm. sanctification process where we're growing to be more Christ-like and that takes humility and it takes application of what the word is telling us. Mm -hmm. So in our groups, we always ask the last question. We go, well, what are you going to do with what God's teaching you? And it's very action oriented, and we try and drill into even like a, a smart goal, something that's attainable, that's uh, simple, and and something that we're going to be able to like measure and say, yeah, I actually did that. Um, you know, which is super hard for us culturally. Often, you know, even coming to that question, people will go, well, I really feel like I need to, you know, forgive more often. Mm. Great. Who do you need to forgive? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, that sheds a whole another layer on the whole conversation, right? Yeah. Who do I need to forgive? Well, actually, I have bitterness towards my cousin or, you mm-hmm. know. Okay, so then what does it look like for you to move towards forgiveness with them? Yeah. Well, wow, that's a whole lot no- more specific and actionable and ac- something I can be held accountable to mm-hmm. than just, well, Courtney, did you grow in forgiveness this yeah. week? Or right? like if they're like, did you know the root word for forgiveness in the Greek is <laughs> yeah, this? And, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. and it's like, okay, that's great. But like, yeah. are you forgiving people yes. in your own life? And yeah, so it's like, it's like sort of the rubber meets the road stuff. Yeah. It's like going from here to here. Yeah. Get it from heart. your head into yep. your heart. And I, again, we're not saying that every Bible study is filled with Pharisees and that every Bible study <laughs> exactly. is filled with people who are never accountable. We're just saying that that's usually not the purpose of that yep. group. There's usually, it would actually almost feel awkward sometimes in those settings yep. if the person leading the Bible study just started to say to people like, well, tell me how you did that last mm-hmm. week. Mm-hmm. Uh, like right. people would be like, whoa, man, like I, get out of my personal life. I'm just here to learn the Bible. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Another example of this is like a class mentality, sure. you know? And now classes, they can have intentional leaders. They can even be relational and, you know, mm-hmm. facilitating a lot of our classes. I feel like in nowadays is like a smaller group setting and we try and encourage discussion because people grow and learn a lot that way. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, they can be relational. Um, you can even have a leader that's being intentional about the reproducible process going, okay, where are these students in this class at spiritually? Yeah. And maybe there's some way they can kind of even alter what they're teaching them based on what 
spiritual stage they're at. Mm -hmm. But most often, the class has a goal. It has something in mind of what we want to teach. You know, we want to teach about it's a finances. Curriculum. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or we want to teach about marriage or, you know, whatever. And so that becomes more so the focus than where every individual is at and what they could use in that moment to grow. Mm -hmm. um, and so... In that same way, it's about studying something, mm -hmm. not necessarily the Bible, though it may have a Bible biblical foundation, um, but the class has a goal that's a little different than discipleship. And mm -hmm. that's the same with Bible study often. Mm -hmm. um, not always, but often. It has the goal of learning yep. some sort of piece about the Bible, Yeah, not necessarily intentionally the goal of making disciples. Yeah, so I, I think what happens there is that those those things could, you know, like, let's say, like, you know, yeah, there's like a biblical foundation there. Maybe people learn a lot from the Word of God, but like, you might be missing that intentional leader. Mm -hmm. So for example, my wife and I were part of a marriage class for like a few months, and uh, mm. the person who like was the group leader, the class leader, essentially their job was to press play on the DVD. Uh, you yeah. know, back back when DVDs were cool, and oh, um, and then they <laughs> they afterwards they said let's read the questions out of the book, yep. and so really what they were was a facilitator. Nothing wrong with that. Yep. Like I, okay, great. They did what they needed to do, uh, but that wasn't an intentional leader. They mm -hmm. weren't like getting into our lives and going like, hey, how are we applying this? And, right. Um, and so the idea there is like th there's some missing elements sometimes when you're in a Bible study or a class that the goal is to go through the curriculum or learn mm -hmm. a certain set of scriptures, mm -hmm. and yet there might not be that intentional leader. There's often not a relational environment. Mm -hmm. It'd mm -hmm. be a little bit weird if someone was just like, hey, can I like just take up a few minutes to talk about all the problems going on in my life? Yeah, that's true. And it's just like, no, that's actually yeah. not what we're here to do. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so it, it misses some of those aspects of what a discipleship group would be. Mm -hmm. Yep. Another group to consider and kind of measure this against is like a sermon series type mm -hmm. group, right? Yep. So we have some groups that kind of like pop up and it's for a eight week series. Mm -hmm. Um same thing there. I mean, often it's uh, somebody's leading it, so there might yep. be an intentional leader. The content is the biblical foundation. Certainly our sermons are rooted in biblical foundation. Mm -hmm. um, and the hope is to grow and learn more and kind of like dive deeper into what we talked about on the Sunday. Mm -hmm. But often the the limitation there is just the time frame, right? Mm -hmm. You can only go so far with people relationally if you only have six to eight weeks and it's kind of this pop in and leave kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So we really encourage like to grow with one another until you've reached a place of maturity and feel like you can go lead others, mm -hmm. right? And so the discipleship model is a lot more intentional about like the specific individual where they're at and casting that vision for future multiplication, not just like the immediate, you know, what can we learn in this moment? Mm -hmm. So another group model that's, I mean, been pretty prevalent in the church is this idea of like a life group. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know, I think sometimes we mean like we do life together. Yep. And so we're a life group, which means like relational Mm -hmm. Right. In some is, churches, that's what it means. Yep, it's like, yep. we do life together, meaning like uh, we're going to be there for each other and like we're, we can, we'll go to each other's like kids sports games and, you know, so mm -hmm. it's like be more involved with each other as mm -hmm. I think what sometimes people mean by life group, but mm -hmm. some other people like kind of see it in a different way. Yeah. Like um, we're going to live, you know, life together forever mm -hmm. life group, right? Yeah. Or like, yeah. this has been my small it's group It's a life for... group for life. Yeah. 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 Um, and so what's interesting about some of those is I think what the heart behind that was getting at is like real, real true relationship where mm -hmm. sometimes it's been hard for us to uh, step into relationship with one another to be authentic. And I, the extra time does build authenticity. It mm -hmm. does help us trust one another and um, go a little deeper or ask questions about someone's story or their life because we know more and we're more informed. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so the heart behind that I think is really cool and it is part of what we're trying to accomplish in discipleship groups. Sure. The other piece of that though is like, I can just get really comfortable with the people that I know and like, these are my friends. Mm -hmm. So I can't go deep unless I really know them. Mm -hmm. And I just, for one, want to really push against that, that idea. Cause that's, it's not what we saw Jesus do, mm -hmm. right? We saw him go deep with, I mean, gosh, the woman at the well that mm -hmm. he just ran into, <laughs> right? Yeah. Or Zacchaeus. He's like, yeah. Hey man, come down here. What? Mm -hmm. I mean, just the examples are like he was Jesus all the time. So he was able to to step into those real authentic conversations sure. 
all the time. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that that, you know, means we shouldn't spend more time together to get to know one another. Because again, those walls come down, we build relationship, we trust each other more, Mm -hmm. and it's easier to be authentic Mm -hmm. and to ask for accountability. Um, But I do want to challenge the idea that it takes 15 years for us to be in a relationship with one another in Mm -hmm. order for me to share with you vulnerably or authentically. I don't think that's accurate. Mm -hmm. And I also think we're going to have to model just risking and being authentic yep. in those spaces, in discipleship groups. And really the tone is set by the leader. So if the mm-hmm. leader's like, I'm going to share with you a struggle I have right now, mm-hmm. boom, your group just went there yeah. without having to have 15 to 20 years of raising babies together to do mm-hmm. that, right? For sure. And, you know, so here the, the benefit or the value is like we talk about a group with a relational environment. Mm-hmm. And it's like those groups really do relational environment well sure. because yeah, they yeah, build yeah. those relationships for such a long period of mm-hmm. time. Um, so that's not necessarily bad. It's mm-hmm. not evil. Um, but uh, the the other the other side of that though is that uh, it feels to me like then we would be missing that reproducible process. Mm-hmm. Like these aren't people who are going out and then reproducing that group and going out and starting different groups. They're literally saying, no, this is our group. Like, you know, kind of the us four and no more, you know, yeah, it's just yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. it's just th- this group mm-hmm. of people and no, it's a closed group usually. Like yep. we don't invite new people in yep. um, and we're going to do this group uh, until Jesus comes back or until we all die. Yep. And, uh, but, you know, so part of that is like, I, you know, part of me is going, yeah, I, I would want really lifelong relationships mm-hmm. with people that I'm in the trenches with. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Courtney, help me to see like, how does, because uh, to me, it almost sounds like a discipleship group. Uh, we say we want a relational environment, but then we also say we want a reproducible process. We mm-hmm. want to split these groups up and send them out mm-hmm. to make more disciples. Yeah. How do those two things connect then? Yeah, it's great. <clears throat> I think it's the relationship is part of the training piece, right? Mm-hmm. It's part of the equipping so that somebody else can go on and do discipleship without you, mm-hmm. right? Um, and so both are important. If we forsake one for the other, I think we under we underestimate Uh, for one thing, the power of how God has wired us to be a part of this mission. Mm -hmm. And we kind of get settled and complacent. And rules of engagement in a group will stay the same for years, for decades. And Mm -hmm. so you really actually, I think, undercut the ability of the rest of those group members to step out in challenge and growth and leadership Mm -hmm. and to lead other people when you just go, listen, it's just going to be us forever. We're going to stick together, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I joke with people when they get uncomfortable about launching a group because it's like, oh, I love these people, and and I just I'm so used to them being in my life so frequently, and um, and and usually I go, yeah, well, if you know, if you're gonna launch them, then you're not gonna see them again, right? And so just you know, wipe your hands from that situation and move on. It's like, it's not that cut and dry, right? You yeah. keep these relationships with people; they still matter to you. Mm-hmm. They still value. There's they still have value to you, but the relationship is slightly changed. Yeah. And if you love them, others are gonna love them, mm-hmm. right? And and you gotta consider that like you're holding people back from the body of Christ that could really benefit from them and their leadership. Mm-hmm. So what's the trade off, right? Are you willing to step into being co laborers with them in the mission? And launching them and letting them, you know, go on to make other disciples who are going to yeah. make disciples yeah. um, and sacrifice a little bit of your own comfort and relationship. Well, and, and I think the reason this really matters is because you see uh, you see Jesus do this with the disciples. He's like, time to go. Yep, and, yep. Uh, and then he leaves. Yep. Uh, but then there's this other piece of this. Like, then you see Paul and, for example, Timothy. Um, he Hmm. like Timothy is a disciple that Paul has discipled. Mm -hmm. And then he says to Timothy in second Timothy two, two, I want you to now entrust other trustworthy people with this so that they can then go and teach this to others. And so we see this discipleship cycle, these generations of disciples making disciples. But like, so for example, in my own life, uh, back when I did missions, uh, we had this missionary who was raising me up. And at the time, it was very much a disciple, disciple y uh, mm. sort of uh, relationship. Like, he was the one discipling me mm. and uh, he was raising me up and teaching me. But then there came this point where, like, I just felt like it was time for me to do something different. And I went and became an associate pastor at a church. Mm. And then he and I maintained a connection. Like, we're mm-hmm. like, hey, well, let's stay friends um, because, like, we really enjoy working together. Uh, so, like, let's just keep meeting to encourage one another. Mm-hmm. And then uh, that turned into this just beautiful friendship. This guy is probably my best friend. Mm-hmm. Um, he and I meet uh, once a month if we can, sometimes mm-hmm. even more. Uh, mm-hmm. And we just encourage one another. And we keep awesome. each other accountable. 
accountable. Uh, but now he's leading multiple campus ministries at uh, campuses all throughout Wisconsin and northern Michigan. And I'm working here as a teaching pastor. And uh, and so, but the point being that like he's off doing that thing. I'm over mm-hmm. here doing this. So there is multiplication of kingdom effort yep. that uh, resulted from me leaving that group. Yep. And that's a group that honestly, if I would have been able to have it my way, I would have stayed with that group my entire life. Hmm. Because I just I still look back at that season of time with a lot of fondness. Yeah, like nice. there was something sweet about being in that group and that fellowship and you know that group of disciples. Um, but the truth is, is that we needed to move on yep. um, for the sake of the kingdom, yep. for the sake of those who don't know Jesus yet. The church is the only uh, organization in the world who exists for people who are not yet part of it. Yes. Oh, that's and a good word. Yeah. yeah. It's just like we yeah. don't exist for our quote unquote members. We exist for the people that still haven't heard. Right. right. And. And uh, so, of course, uh, you know, and we're not saying that like that means that we don't care about people who are a part of it. But <laughs> no, uh, so, not. but the point of like the fact that he and I have a better, stronger friendship and connection today than we did yeah. then, um, and it was because of multiplication. Yep. Yep. I mean, we are on a seek and save the lost mission if yep. we're Christ followers, right? Absolutely. And so we got to wrestle with our own comfort in group dynamics yep. versus what's best for the kingdom. Mm-hmm. What does multiplication look like? Absolutely. Um, so yeah, we'd encourage you with that. We'd encourage you to consider checking out a group if you're at Christ the Rock and are not yet a part of a discipleship group. We mm-hmm. really want to encourage everyone to be a part of a group. Um, here at the church, we do groups weekly or bi-weekly, and so mm-hmm. we ask you to be in them consistently. We ask you to you know get involved in one that you can consistently be a part of relationship Mm -hmm. with other believers and with an intentional leader. Uh, Next week, we're going to talk about the last part of the intentional life pathway, which is go time. Go time. Maybe my favorite. So I'm really looking forward to it. (laughs) Um, We'll tune in next time. We'll talk about go. Yeah. See you then. Mm